everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, you guys are most likely familiar with Polaroid cameras and more recently the Fujifilm Instax instant print cameras. Well, this is a gift from a friend of mine recently. This is Kodak's take on that and it's called the Kodak Printomatic. It's not instant film, it's actually a printing technology called Zinc or Zero Ink technology. It's a thermal printing process and it produces color pictures. There's a number of different devices on the market using zinc technology, one of them being the Polaroid Mint pocket printer which uses the same zinc technology to print cell phone photos via Bluetooth. So we're going to cover this little Kodak Printomatic camera and then I'll make a few comparisons with the Polaroid's Mint printer. Stay tuned. Okay, here is our Kodak Printomatic camera. All right. Okay, so it is instant 2 by 3 inch color photo prints, 5 megapixel resolution. There's a slot for a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes, so you can use it as a digital camera. And a built in lithium ion battery, which probably means it needs to be charged. All right, there is the camera. And there may or may not be something. Oh, yes. It looks like we have a pack of the zinc paper. Little instruction booklet in Kodak yellow. Okay, here is the camera. It has a little insert in the slot. Well, here we go. There is a peel-off little film covering the most likely plastic window where the tiny little lens in sensor is. There is an optical viewfinder, which is interesting. And here is the cartridge slot or compartment for the paper. And it charges via one of these style of USB connectors. So here's a power button. Okay, well there's enough power in this right now to light the button and make the camera react. Let's open up a pack of this zero ink paper. This is Kodak branded by the way, but they sell, uh, you can get it online. There's a lot of different brands that have used this same kind of paper. Uh, I have the little Polaroid printer. Okay, there's like that. And now, light is lit. Paper is in here. Let's take our picture. All right, it is flashing. It should first of all eject the blue card, which is what it's doing. Okay, it sounds like it ejected the blue card and now it is actually printing our picture. If I am to believe the sounds it's making, of course we haven't read the yellow Kodak quick start guide. Let's see here. Let's see how this looks. Hey, a little brilliant, I would say. And uh, they are adhesive. You can peel off the back and stick them somewhere. So this just leaves more opportunity for more pictures of Joe to be proliferated in the universe. Now, as for that optical viewfinder, well, first of all, it is in the upper left corner, which if you like a rangefinder style focusing or viewfinder window focusing, it is pretty good. I can see the world with my left eye and I can see the view through the right eye. Now, it does appear to be slightly fisheye distorted, but there is a frame line composed of four corner lines that defines the actual image of view. So the actual image of view is smaller than the total view in the viewfinder, which means it's kind of like a rangefinder camera. You can see outside of the image area, which is very cool. I think I like that. Well, and obviously the sensor is probably so small, like I can barely see the lens in there, that it's tiny sensor, so the depth of focus is probably really wide. But let's see if you can see through the viewfinder. So you may not be able to see the frame lines. They're very prominent in my eye, but you can see the view there. 
The camera also has a flash or at least a bright white LED that it turns on automatically when needed and it has of course the power button, the white power indicator, the shutter button. On the bottom you have the charging jack, the micro SD port and then there is a reset button. What is it right here? Reset button for resetting the camera if it gets hung up. There's also what appears to be two little slots for a tiny little camera strap, but it didn't come with a camera strap in the package, but if you happen to have a spare camera strap, the tiny kind that loops through, then that might work. Well, based on just this one photo, I can't say that it's a spectacular camera in terms of colors, but uh, I should probably use this in a wider variety of uh, situations and see how I get on with it, keeping in mind that my Polaroid Zinc printer that connects via Bluetooth to my phone enables me to print cell phone photos, which intrinsically would be sharper, although they're all limited by the Zinc printing technology in terms of resolution, dynamic range, and color accuracy. So maybe it's kind of a moot point using your phone, in which case this becomes maybe more of a, like a Polaroid camera, right? For parties and stuff. Well, I had an opportunity to take the this little Kodak Printomatic camera out when I met the New Mexico Film Photography Group uh, yesterday. And uh, in the process of my little outing, of course, this ends up going home with me. So this might be a fixture on my table. We'll see. Anyways, I had a chance to use this. Keep in mind that the instruction sheet uh, for this camera that came with it really doesn't tell you all the details that you need to know how to take pictures and this was especially a problem because I didn't know that there was a when you push the shutter button there's a beep and you think that that's when the picture has been taken well actually you have to wait for the second beep and the second beep is when the picture is taken so I had quite a few pictures that were blurry because I heard the first beep and I moved the camera away and the picture was actually taken while the camera was like in motion away from being pointed at the subject so we'll look at those pictures we'll look at the colors and I I did kind of a variety of um, subject matter trying to capture different uh, you know colors and stuff and seeing how it worked in in daylight exposures you wonder what's going on with this camera when you get a picture like this. And what's happening here is that there's two beeps when you press the shutter. You don't know this. You hear a beep after you press it and you think, okay, the picture's taken. So then you start moving the camera away. And then shortly after, there's a second beep. And that's when the picture's actually taken. And instead of taking a picture of my friend Mike and Margaret, uh, it took a picture of kind of the table in front of them as the camera was in motion. So you get this kind of distorted motion blur. Um, it's actually a little bit of rolling shutter as well effect because there's a there's a significant delay in, in the way the camera works. Here's another example trying to take a picture of some people here at our New Mexico Film Photographers Group. And instead of getting their face, I guess I was dropping the camera down after taking their picture, and that's when this picture is taken. So you have to be aware of that. Again, a picture of Margaret. No, not really uh, capturing her face. Then we have a couple pictures of these little fruits that were on the table. Again, there is a significant parallax error because you have an optical viewfinder that is not aligned with the lens itself. And so if you try taking close-up pictures, you can see you're going to have to do some adjustments to your angle of view, and that's a little tricky, of course. Here is a picture I took out in my backyard yesterday. Once I understood the shutter delay, I was really interested in seeing how it reproduces greens, and the greens are kind of subdued and muted. I would say uh, that's probably the weak spot on its color spectrum. However, this picture I took this morning, just a while ago, you can see skin tones, especially under artificial lighting, really look peach colored and exaggerated and kind of almost orangish peach. Not very pleasant. Here's another example of how easy it is to accidentally push the shutter button. Even when it's printing a print, you can press the shutter button and it'll make another image unexpectedly. And when the camera isn't pointed at anything, so I would call this modern art, certainly. Uh, there was one picture, however, that I was really interested in, and it was this one. So I had pulled up a 
picture in my camera roll uh, a selfie that I had done on uh, Harman Direct Positive Paper, I believe. So this was originally a black and white uh, high contrast image on my cell phone. And I just held the zinc camera up to my cell phone screen to take a photograph of it. And what I got was a reflection of the green camera itself. Uh, and you can actually see the viewfinder of the camera down here, this little circle. But what's interesting is the resulting picture is very much interesting. It's kind of, a, it looks like a graphic arts effect you would get in Photoshop. So not what I was expecting, but it means, you know, you might be able to use this camera for some creative effects. Certainly not standard, sharp, realistic photographs, but it could be kind of an artsy thing. You could get, get by with doing it that way. This little piece of advertising gimmickry that came with the camera this in no way represents the quality of image that you can get out of the camera. This is just total malarkey. Uh, you can't get a picture this good out of this camera. I was hoping a lot more for this camera than what it actually delivers. First of all, I don't really like the green color. It's a little garish, but I like the shape of this camera. I like the rounded corners, especially I like the viewfinder. It's an optical peep sight viewfinder with frame lines and uh, that's really cool. Um, but the image quality is really what suffers mostly with this. Well, let me just show you the little problem with the shutter button. First, I'm going to press and hold the power button until the tiny little light comes on, and that tells you the camera is active. Okay, I'm going to try taking a selfie here. So that little noise tells you the camera just woke up, right? So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to push the button. You think that's the shutter? No, it's that second beep that's the shutter sound. And then you have to sit and wait for the camera to process the image and start printing it, which can take a surprisingly long period of time. There. Now you hear it making the print. So the print comes out with the image size facing to the back of the camera, which makes sense, right, for the photographer to see it. Well, in contrast to this standalone Kodak Printomatic camera, if you were going to get a Zinc photographic device, I would recommend something like this Polaroid Mint Pocket Printer. So this is a printer only, it's not a camera, and it syncs up via Bluetooth to your cell phone, so you can actually print cell phone photos on the Zinc paper. I would recommend this instead of this. Keeping in mind, of course, you have to keep it charged just like you do with this. And it has the same kind of limitations in terms of the kind of paper it uses, etc. But I really think this is a more flexible, useful device, and it's going to give you a slightly better image quality. So here's an example of some of these Polaroid mint printer uh, prints. So these are cell phone photos, Bluetooth to the Polaroid printer. Quite a bit better quality than the Kodak standalone camera. Here's an interesting landscape image. The sky does get kind of wonky at times, uh, but it has enough resolution that you can take a scan of a typewritten sheet and you can print it on the mint or zinc printer and actually get legible copy here from that Polaroid printer. Here's another uh, typewriter shot, a Groma Calibri. It's not too bad of an image. Here's another typewriter shot on the Polaroid printer. So definitely the Polaroid printer does a better job uh, because the camera that you're working with is going to be your cell phone. And almost any cell phone is going to have a better quality image than this. Well, there's one more thing I wanted to try with this uh, Kodak Printomatic, and that is, you know, it has a micro SD slot in the bottom of it. What does it look like for the digital file itself? And compare that to the zinc print that it makes. So I went outside in the backyard, I took a snap, I first got my little micro SD card, a spare one, put it in the slot there, went out in the backyard and took a shot, it makes a zinc print, but it also delivers a digital file. The digital file, as you can see, is a different aspect ratio. The zinc prints are 2 by 3 aspect ratio, whereas the full digital file is 4 by 3, so it's a little more squarish in shape. 
You can see the highlights are blown in both the zinc print and the digital file, so the little digital camera in here really can't handle high dynamic range environments, and of course there's no exposure adjustment available. But you can see the blues in my shirt are a little more vibrant in the digital file compared to the zinc print, and I think you can attribute that just to the intrinsic limitations of the zinc printing technology and its color accuracy. And it's going to want to make a print also, so I think that might limit how fast you can take these digital photos. Well, how does the cost of zinc compare to, let's say, Fuji's Instax Mini uh, print paper, which is about the same uh, size? Well, I, on looking on Amazon here in the United States, I can find zinc paper, uh, $24.00 for 50 sheets. So that's about 50 cents an exposure. Whereas Instax Mini is about $13 for 20 exposure, so that's about 65 cents each. So the uh, Instax Mini is 15 cents more per picture, but you might like the results better than this. Again, a promising camera, a lot of things that I was hopeful would be better about it. I really love the style, not necessarily the color, but the shape of it, the optical viewfinder is really nice, but everything else about it isn't really that good. Hey, if you're a photographic artist though, you're gonna be the next Andy Warhol or something, these actually might be pretty cool. You can make a collage of weird faces maybe, you know, and they're, they're stickers. You can peel them off and stick them to something. So it does have some creative potential, but not if you're just looking for standard good photographs. All right, guys, it's great talking to you. And if you have any questions or any comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. And stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.